So we're blessed today. Pastor Mark is going to come and share the Word of God with us. And uh, I know that uh, you'll be blessed, so get your Bible out. Amen. (laughs) If you don't have your Bible with you, maybe you have your your phone or your iPad or your computer or something. (laughs) Something with the Word on it. Amen. With the Word in it. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. I think God has had his way. The Spirit of the Lord has had his way. I I feel refreshed. What about you? Amen. It could be a hearty amen right there for if you really, really sense hearty amen. Praise the Lord. I, I always thank God for like when you're spending time in prayer and you're seeking his face and you're saying, Lord, what direction? What do I do? What would you have me to say? So what happens many times, whether for me, if I came up to do an offering teachings or whatever throughout the years, the pastors or whoever would go before, I would be listening to what they were saying. And, and, not, and it's not always that's the rule. But I'm saying so many times that what I've already had prepared, I would listen and hear that come out of someone's mouth. Amen. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? It makes me get excited. When you hear what Dr. Bob said, he, one of the last things he said, require, he said, but you can go beyond. He said, require, well, guess what the title of my message is? Requirements. <laughs> Let's go right in. Re- here's the definition of requirements. Something that is wanted, are you hearing me? Something that is wanted or needed a necessity, and then here's a uh, term, production was not sufficient to satisfy the military requirements. Did you get that? Production was not sufficient to satisfy the military requirements. There's everything that, most things, should I say, that we touch or deal with require something. Your car did not come over here unless you have an electric car, did not come over here on air. It requires gas, fuel, some form. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But what I was looking at this morning is that in the church, do we walk out and fulfill the requirement that are on our lives. And here's the question. We just had a glorious time. We've been in the presence of the Lord. We've been filled and touched and many redirected, right? But to me, when I was looking at this morning, it's very sobering. Here's a question I want to ask. When is the last time you shared the gospel with anyone? Or have you ever shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with anyone? And so as I was praying, I heard, here's what I heard the Lord say. He said, don't be rushing through this. I'm not, I don't need to be up here long. Because when the spirit of the Lord is in a thing, he is the one that does the work. You have to be discerning enough to know when you're pushing past the parameters of what the spirit has already laid out. You see, he's already been here this morning, moving in a very beautiful way. So I don't have to get up here and to try to promote anything other than the fact of the parameters that are there. You see, I just need to stay in my lane. (laughs) Look here, and now watch this. If you don't think this is confirmation, then we can all come back to the altar what did Dr. Bob say? He said even Jews need to be saved. Well, I, well let's see who Jesus is talking to here in uh, Luke 14, in uh, the 15th verse. Let's see who he's talking to. He says, now when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servants at supper supper time to say to those who were invited, come, for all things are now ready. Verse 18 says, but they were all with one 
one accord and began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have, I ask you to have me excused. Verse 19 says, and another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Verse 20 says, still another said, I've, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. <laughs> and the wife said, you better stay home. No, she didn't say that. So verse 21 says, so the servant came and reported these things to the master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servants, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes. Go into the lanes with your ball prepared for a strike. And to the city and bring in here the poor the maimed, the lame, and the blind. Verse 22 says, And the servant said, Master, it is done. <laughs> I like that. Master, it is done. As you have commanded, look at that word, as you have commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and to the hedges and compel, and to come, compel them to come in that my house may be filled where we are invited shall taste my supper. Father, we thank you that right now, God, that even in this moment, that, Lord God, that your will, your plans, and your purposes today, and all that you, Lord God, have laid out for us this morning, that, Lord God, that you bring it to completion. I pray that right now, that, Lord God, that every heart, Every heart that's been pricked today, every heart that is open and saying yes and amen to your will. I thank you that right now that there would just be a continual refreshing and opportunity, Lord God, for the Holy Spirit to deal with each individual. Help me, Lord God, to articulate in a way with the Holy Spirit's help what you need to say today in Jesus' name. Even the Jews need to be saved, what Dr. Bob said. But you look at this day and age that we're in. This has been, there's been a time of, in the houses of God where, where there's just been complacency. Where, where people are just like here. We're showing up, but there's no movement. There's no, there's no going out with the fire and presence of God to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. When I look at my life, and I think for many years I was out in the world, and no one ever shared the gospel of Jesus Christ with me. And I know that there had to be, now I know there had to be many people that were walking by me, that had the love of God in them, but guess what? They were like the ones in the beginning. They had excuses. I'm married. I've got to go pay a bill. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. Do you know that we can bind ourselves up in such a way that the things that should cause us to have compassion and the convicting power of the Holy Spirit to move in our lives, we've been, we, we can become desensitized because we allow our, our lives to be full of excuses. We can see so much that it's like now it just becomes normal. Pastor Pam was standing up here earlier and she said, hey, you know what happened in Miami caused her heart to break. She felt the weight of those there's, where there's uncertainty. There's no, we don't know who's, who's there, who's alive or who's not. We're believing. We've seen and heard of accounts that people that have been buried and whatever and, and God sustained their life because of the power of prayer and agreement. Amen. I'm very passionate about souls. I've always been that way. I thank God for that. I really thank God for that. 
In past times, I would ask God to help me to have a balance. That it wasn't just about me coming in and saying how many people I witnessed to, I witnessed to, I witnessed to, because I was like stroking my own ego. You understand? But when you really die to self, when you really die to your flesh, and you see the importance of human beings and why Christ came, most people can rehearse back and forth why Christ came. But are we walking out? Are we going into the highways? Are we going into the byways? Are we compelling men and women to come to the Lord? Are we? For years, I would think, man, God, why are we so heartless? It's almost we're acting like the world. We're talking about the issues. We're not spending time in prayer, interceding. You know, that's where the true levels of compassion comes in is when you, what does it mean to intercede? It means to stand in the gap. It means to stand in between. So when we, you and I didn't have the ability to pray for ourselves, guess what? Someone was praying for us. Someone that we maybe didn't even know, more than likely we didn't know, that the Spirit of God was dealing with them to pray for a mark. Then maybe the name Mark just came up, or, or Bob, or, or Rachel, or whomever. But God is serious about souls. And I think in the church, we've, we've backed off because we've, there's been so many onslaughts of, of demonic and fleshly things coming against the church that people have now learned to just become very passive. Very passive. Oh, you would hear Dr. Bob say all the time, oh, we don't want to offend. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. The devil does not care who he kills, steals, or robs from. As long as he has some form of bondage and taking someone away from the kingdom of God. Pastor Pam said this morning, everything that God does, the devil wants to mimic. He wants to act as though he, he is the originator of a thing. But he's not. Look, if we don't get to a place of true soberness and really seeing the importance of what God has done in our lives. Look, I said one time from here and I felt like, man, God, did that just go over? Or did it come off weird? But I said one time, when you're really in love with someone, you don't have a problem telling anyone about it. When you're in love with some, someone or something, you don't have a problem saying, hey, I'm in love with this thing here. Oh, I love this, right? But if God has really done a creative work through the power of Jesus Christ and the cross, then why don't we have that level of love to go and do what he says to do? Look, we can break this thing down very detailed. Many times we're looking at the fact of like, what sin? You know, I'm so, I, I'm not out there doing this. You know, we've got our little thing in our head, a little rolling. I'm not out there doing this anymore. I'm not out there doing that anymore. And so it's almost like we make ourselves feel like we're in this little safe zone. I'm not doing those major things. You know, the major ones. I didn't shoot anyone today. Isn't that a major one? I didn't, I didn't go out and sell drugs today. Isn't that a major one? But what about what the, it said the, in the command? He said there was a command to go. To go. Hey, let me, let, me, let, me, let me break this down. This is pretty cool. Here's what Paul was doing. Listen to what Paul was telling them. Over here, he was, he was started out with like a prayer, and then he's exhorting in 2 Thessalonians 3. Listen to what Paul says. He says, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run woo -hoo, swiftly and be glorified 
just as it is with you. He says, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have, what? Faith. Verse 3 says, but the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from every evil one. Verse 4 says, and we have confidence. Look at that. Not in ourselves. The Bible says, put no confidence in your flesh. But our confidence is in Christ. Amen. It says in the Lord concerning you both that you do and will do the things. Look, we command you. So we don't want to hear in this day and age that there are commandments. We'll talk about the Ten Commandments, but we don't want to hear that their word comes forth that doesn't give us a easy route out. We want to hear things that, you know, okay, if you feel if it's okay today, or, if, you know, if you got enough rest today, if that was the case, I wouldn't want to be up here today, and definitely I wouldn't want to have been back there exerting any other type of energy that had to do <laughs> with the things of God, because I was feeling tired. In Espanol, what is it? Consal? I thought Pastor Rachel would know that one, but okay. Huh? Exactamente. So, look at this. Now may the Lord direct your hearts. Whoa. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ now look here now he shifts he shifts in verse 6 he says but we command you brethren in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ now here's some commands that are going on here from Luke to here there's these are commands do you see how we've how we've turned in in the church world over the years it's 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 not we're seeing the power of God and what he says is what he means What he says is what he means. There are people walking all around us all the time. And we don't hear the command. One of the reasons I remember way before I got born again, I was, I was like, I don't know who those people are in those little white shirts and black slacks, but they are dedicated. I'm serious. I didn't know Jesus. I said they are dedicated Hold on. I didn't hear an answer. I believe Christians invented the peephole. <laughs> oh, no, it's them. <laughs> I needed that one for myself. <laughs> But look, now my eyes are watering. I can't see the page, but hold on. <laughs> but he's going on here to deal, and he's talking about laziness, not connecting, being connected with other lazy believers. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Who are we connecting with? Who are we spending time with? You know, Jesus sent them out in twos. They went out in twos. In the highways and the byways, they walked together. They did, did the work of the Lord together. It's time for us to rally. You see what I mean? It's time for us to rally. Go back and look at what, I, what I'm asking. When is the last time or ever have you shared the gospel or the good news? To me, it's a sobering question. You see, have we found our comfort zone just behind the four walls of the church? You know what I mean? You're, back in the day, there used to be a saying that, hey, wait a minute, they would see someone come into the neighborhood and they would go, oh no, there goes the neighborhood. Right? Why? 
because they felt that whoever was coming into that neighborhood would, was, was defiling or spoiling or, or would, was messing it up. Is that who we are? We don't want to see the foreigners, Dr. Bob. We don't want to see the foreigners coming into the house of God. Really? Then if we do, we've got to go do what he commanded us to do. If there's fear, if you're dealing with fear, this is a time where God is dealing with us in such a way. He's dealing with us to expose every area. There's nothing hidden. Nothing is hidden in this season. Don't you see how it's moving in the services? There's nothing hidden. He'll pour in. Why? Only way that he can pour in is if he can empty you out, empty something out first that's not of him. So he's asking ourselves, will we make room for what he said in his word? Will we make room? This is not, a, this is not times where our ear gates or, or hearing condemning and, and, and words that are off. We just came through a whole series and going through a series of offense, debate of Satan. So we're prepared. You're prepared. You're not going to allow to say, well, wait a minute, who is he thinking? No, because that's not what's going on here. I'm speaking to me. I'm speaking to Mark. Go. If I didn't know any strangers when I was in the world, why would I not know strangers now? If I, and here's the thing. Those people that knock on the door, guess why? They knock because they believe in what they're saying. And, and guess another thing that, why they do it? It's because they're prepared. They have equipped themselves, whether they've said in classes or disciplined themselves at home from whatever that command comes from, whatever they're taught from, but they're prepared. Do you see that, how, how off that is, that we sit in houses of God where the goodness and the glory of his love the sovereignty of his greatness can come, touch us in an instant, take off all weariness, heaviness, all demonic oppressions and things of that nature, and then we can step out the door, enter into that level of rain, and let it all wash off of us before we get to our destination or our home. We, in other words, we can forget that fast so when you hear nowadays or throughout the years when the, we would hear say hey we need to be on fire there's a fire that we can carry that we can walk in that no level of rain or anything can quench that's what the enemy fears he fears the fact that there are men and women of God that will reconsider in a season or in a moment through the, through the wooing and, or the convicting power of the Holy Spirit to quicken them and to say, you know what? You're not doing what you're called to do. There have been commands that have been laid out that there's no flaws in them. There's no errors in them. And you have to do those things. Why? Because he loved you first. I've never known anyone to ever fight for me like this king. I know that I was a chief sinner. What about you? I know that, did you, did you hear the other day when we were reading, it was talking about not, for us not to be a stumbling block or, or, or leading the little ones, those that are immature in the Lord or that don't even know God, that we can cause for our lack of fire, our lack of dedication, our lack of being who he's called us to be. We can cause people to stumble. So if we're not going and getting redirected, coming to the altars of God, being truthful, being honest, maybe having to go to someone else and say, hey, you know what? For years, I've put on a good facade. I know how to put the makeup on. Cover girl is my friend. Not mine personally, but cover girl is my friend. Now, maybe one day when... You know, the, the cameras are really rolling and we had to build and, you know, the glare from my, you know, you got to get a little powder. It's possible. 
But the truth is, is that I have to repent. See, I have to repent. Every day that I'm not doing the commandment or the things that I've been told to do, I'm in sin. You can try to pretty up any kind of way you want. And some of you in here are excellent present rappers. I've watched over the years. You can get whatever color paper you want put on it, but you cannot cover this. On Easter services, we get all emotional about what happened to Christ on his way to the cross, what he had to endure. But then how do we let that go so easily? Do you know that there's all kind of challenges they do nowadays? I mean, I, I, I never got into any of that stuff, you know, ice bucket challenges and all kind of challenges. But here's what's in my heart. I believe the Lord dropped this in my heart is I just want to challenge myself and challenge you all. The month of July is coming up. It's coming up here quickly. And I just want to put a challenge out there that we would go after souls in a way that we've never, ever, 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 ever known. Not, not to just put numbers, but because their destiny, they have a place. There's a place that, what are we just concerned about that we escaped hell? Is that the, is that the, is that the fullness of our walk? No. The fullness of our walk is to be the disciples of Jesus Christ, walking out like he walked. So let's, just, let's do a couple things. If we need preparation, if we're not in the word enough that we feel that, hey, if I come up against someone and they ask me this, then what do I do? Is that, is that been maybe a reason for some people throughout the years why they've never, ever wanted to share the gospel? Because they don't believe they're prepared for the answers. Well, is that a truth? Is that, could that not be a truth? That I don't want to engage. Well, then here's the thing. Don't you see the goodness of God that he allows us to come in and out of the, 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 the doors of the church to get pre be prepared, to be equipped? You see what I mean? If you're dealing with different levels of fear, I remember one time I was witnessing with Wayne, Brother Wayne, and, and, and Brother John Custer. We were at Lincoln Park down here. I mean, we were hitting them. We were hitting them that day. I mean, I'm not just trying. We were, we were at it. And, a, and, and Wayne was right there. He'll tell you. This woman said, well, I'm a witch. And she, you know what she told me to my face? She said, well, I, I know you walk with the fire of God. Didn't she, Wayne? She said, but if I see you one day out of order, I'm going to call you on the carpet. That's what she told me. So while we're out here doing our thing, there's levels of preparation on the enemy's side that has people prepared to, to, to walk in that demonic realm of the spirit. Things that we're not speaking of enough in the houses of God. You see, I love music. But I know music isn't going to get me into the kingdom. I might feel good for a season, but that sh soon shall wear off. <laughs> There has to be a, an intensity. There has to be a place that we come before the Lord and say, Lord, help me. Help me to, to, to have compassion once again for the hurting. You hear what, he, what Jesus said earlier? The blind, the lame, the maimed. That doesn't just mean they're physically blind. They're spiritually blind. Right? They're physically and spiritually lamed. We pray we don't see enough miracles. Well, maybe the reason why we don't see enough miracles is because we're not doing the other things first. I remember my mother, who's gone on to be with the Lord. I remember, you know, they used to say words like this. This is a pressing way. You know, this is a pressing way 
Well, I didn't really. I mean, it, a pressing way. But it is a pressing way. Because if you're not moving ahead, <laughs> you're either like this or you're doing the Michael Jackson, doing the moonwalk, going backwards. But I'm challenging us today as a house that we've been around each other for. Some of us, I've known you now for 11 years. I've known Dr. Bob for over two decades plus. We know one another, right? We should know one another. And there should be enough love and patience and understanding between all of us that we should be able to say, hey, if I need for, for someone to stand alongside with me or to begin to uh, you know, work with me and whatever that thing might be, let's, let's be transparent in this time. Because when I look around, I know that if my heart feels empty sometimes, when I'm with the Lord, when he knows that this city is full of people all over the place. And we walk by him. Every day. Never say a word. Why? You know why? Uh oh, it's going to be a. Hold on. Should I go to my cage or. Because what? Let me go to cover. Because listen to this one. Maybe we're prejudiced. No, I'm not talking about racial. I'm talking about the fact that we can see the sin. We can recognize the sin so easy. And the sin can make us, you know, like the McGillicuddies or whoever they were. You know what I mean? Well, I don't understand the youth today. Just look at them. Pants hanging off. She's got four babies. Oh. How could they? What is going wrong with this world? I'm talking about, this is, now this is what believers, because I'm around them all the time. The only thing that I don't do when I'm around them is I do not have a barf bag. You know what I mean? So easily we can forget of where we came from. And I'm going to tell you something. Here's what a lot of believers don't like to hear. Just because your sins weren't fully exposed like someone else's. Just because the king didn't expose you fully. Don't get comfortable. We're in a war. This war is intense. So here's what I said this morning. I said, Lord God, man, I, please forgive me. Do I share the gospel? Yeah, but is there, a, is there another level? What do you require? What if the Lord requires more? What if he was requiring more of you right now? Huh? Now, I've been in services like this where the glory of God fell and you could, you could hear pins drop. But that's not, I believe this is just an awakening. Earlier, we just were in his presence. I mean, he came so beautiful. Did you know that he was coming that way? No. Did I know he was coming that way? No. Did we pray for that? <laughs> so, so that means that there's power in prayer. And that means that we really serve a father that hears us and can answer. And if his hand is not too short to save in this instance, then how is his hand too short to save over there? So here's what I used to pray. Father, let me be an extended, tangible hand. That sounded deep, didn't it? Father, let me be an extended, tangible hand in the world. Did I mean it? Only he knows, and me. What do you want to be? You know what I mean? Maybe you want to be a foot. Maybe you want to be a back. I don't know. But I'm saying we've got to do different than what we've done. See, we've been trying to have these messages for years in the church that would cause people to be, well, hey, going out the door. Hey, how did, how did Dr. or such and such do today? What did you, how did you think the message? Well, did you like the message? Whatever. Did, did he quote that scripture correctly? Blah, blah, blah. What, what, what? That's what we've done. But what we haven't done 
it's got the meat of what the spirit was saying from the very beginning. <laughs> and that's souls. Today you're going to run into you're going to run into someone. Maybe at Applebee's. You do you know the level of judgment that we have against our lives to be able to have understanding the gifts of the spirit, have understanding words of knowledge, prophetic utterances and things like that. And we can't go out those doors and walk in that same flow. That's what the devil fear. Many of us were so bold for the devil. Bold. And I'm not just talking about men. I'm talking about women too. Bold. Little warrior women for the devil. Running around every, just bold. I seen it last night with my own eyes. The boldness of, 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 of that spirit upon women. Last night I saw it. I said, I, I was sitting in my car and I said, whoa, what did she just say to me? I mean, I'm not even going to repeat it. That's how bold it was. It never even blinked. So people that yield themselves and are bound, and many of them don't even know they're bound, you see what I mean? Yeah. But yet, they can yield themselves completely. Pastor Pam was just doing a, sharing with us, and Dr. Bob was reading uh, uh, some information uh, on a gentleman that was talking about how the enemy mimics God. And how that there are people that literally operate and flow the same way that we're flowing right here today. Isn't that amazing? They're gathered right now all over the world. Uh, no, I said all over the world. Let me just give you some little nuggets, the stuff that we don't speak. Let me, you know, watch this. There, there is those teams and they literally can have Living Water Church on their radar. And they're saying uh, in their group. Maybe 20 people or whatever. They're saying, what's the name of the? Satan. What is the name of the leader? Lucifer. Yeah. Oh, so there's a Dr. Bob and there's a Pastor Pam. That's what we just received. Okay, so what we're doing is that they've been laboring in the field of, of, and, and been, been walking with God for years. Their heart is after God. Their heart is for the people of God. Their heart is to see the fulfillment of God. We have to see them destruct. We have to see them become weary and exhausted. So they pray. And anyone else in their leadership or in the membership calls there, we're praying that there would be division. We're, called, we're praying that there would be assaults and unforgiveness and the very thing, whatever that they believe that what God says, we're believing the opposite. We cannot see that ministry launch and fulfill what God has said for it to be. Is that too graphic or, is that, or does that sound like that? It's like, is, would that be a form of war if you were an enemy? Would you not move that way? Would you not want to take out head people? Would you not want them to die prematurely? Right? So sometimes when we're speaking, it's like these things are like the first times we've ever heard them. But there shouldn't be. Because every prepared soldier that goes into natural war, that's why, that's why the training in the boot camp is so intense. So that it helps to weed out and deal with issues and areas, fears and phobias. Be, allow them to be equipped to know how to handle their machinery and, and how to deal in circumstances. And how to rely on one another that every joint supplies even in the natural military. Amen. Dr. Bob says there ain't no color in foxholes. <laughs> right? Exactly. I just, I'm in a place that I, I don't want to, I'm not, want, I don't want to play church. I don't want to play church. I don't. You say, well, I'm not playing church. Well, let's go this in. What did he say? He said, there's command. There's a command. Go into the highways. Go into the byways and to compel. Do you know that's why you have to have the Holy Spirit? 
Because when you try to compel or persuade anything on your own, you will physically, emotionally burn out. Scripture's talking about Paul was led into the regions. He was led into the regions. So that means the Holy Spirit was guiding him. That's what we should be praying over our lives. Some of us that are maybe retired, we don't speak enough of these things. That we don't say, your life is not over. It's just begun. There's a level of freedom that God has given you to be open for movement, his direction. We talk about his unction, the unction of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> whether it's nursing homes or whether it's, whether it's daycares, I don't know. Only he can direct. You know why most people don't pray? Uh-oh, here comes another, what was the big bomb they dropped years ago? Yeah, hydrogen. Atomic. Here's an atomic bomb. Most people, Christians, will not pray because if they pray in serious, they will have to hear something that they might not want to do. Exactly. So why pray if you've already have a made up mind? See what I mean? So, you got men that are in the penitentiaries. They're constantly coming out all the time. And women. And guess what? They, most of the times, have to either go to a halfway house or this or this and that. But when they come out, they never really have any true men of God that they can connect with. That are solid. You know what I mean? Those, those guys come out and they're thinking, man, where, where, are, the, where are the real men of God at? I mean, who can we connect with? Which church can we come into and, and not be looked at cross-eyed that, that our past, but we've asked to be forgiven. You see how we are? We've asked to be forgiven. Where can we come? Where can the drug addicts come? See, we, can, we walk in power. We have the power of God. We don't have to live in fear of anything. Uh-oh. I'm I don't know. I feel really alone like right now. What is that? <laughs> Thank God for the angels that are with me. But you see, these are just practical things. It's not some over the top Mark Greer deal. I'm with my family. I'm with my family. I'm the same person that's going to walk out with you in just a few minutes. And I'm the same dude that will stand and walk and fight with you the same way that I'm standing. That's who I'm. That's how we're cut to be. Amen. We're cut for this thing. Why? Because of the power through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. We've been equipped. We are really more than conquerors. It is not the churchy cliche deal. We are more than conquerors. I'm serious. We are. There's all kind of motivational speakers all over the place. They hype people up and blah, blah, blah. And give me 1995 or do this, do this and that. That's not what we, we have already, look, we've already weighed the cost. We should have. Every good soldier, if you go back there and look, it talks about no soldier goes out to war. He doesn't go out to war unprepared. Or you don't go, you, in all the years that you all built, built, did you just keep any, any kind of sub on your team because they had good looking teeth? No. <laughs> or the, they were going to go to the same watering hole with you. <laughs> and I, you didn't do that. Why? Because what did you all teach me 20 some years ago? You said, you know what we did? We prayed. Everything that we put our hands on, we never did it on our own. We prayed, and if we were not in agreement, we did not touch it. Wouldn't that have to do with subs? So that means if even though the sub could do good work, but it might be a corrupted individual. And if that individual is corrupt upon your team, then your whole team becomes corrupt. 
Didn't you hear what he said here about laziness? He's saying don't connect with lazy believers. Someone that's just going to say a good thing. But when they come time to say, come on, let's go. Let's go. That's what, that's what we should be doing. Calling one another saying, hey, let's get together and pray. Let's get together and seek God. We've, we've been telling God what to do for the longest. God, go to the jails, go to the hospitals, go to here, go there. But he's told us to go. Does that make sense? Yes. If there's a command. If you don't get anything out of this today, get this fact that, that God's word is what he says. What does it say? That his word is higher than his name? How can you wrap your head around that? That you can speak a thing and say that whatever I say, I'm going to back it. What about the challenge? Can we team up and, and, and turn? Do you know what he did today? He turned because we made ourselves available. He turned the thing. I know what I was feeling when I was in that office. I know what I was dealing with this morning. I know what I was dealing with. You saw it probably on me. Weariness and haziness and demonic oppression and stuff that, that has been released towards my life. I'm not just hitting those symbols. You know what I do? Those are prophetic acts. Do you know what I'm doing? Do you really honestly know? When I hit a symbol, I'm believing that it's the power of God crashing and breaking, breaking things instantaneous. I'm not no entertainer. We're not up here entertaining. This is war. God wants this house full. He wants people equipped and he wants us to deal in areas of our lives. And when we really come clean today and say, I truly repent, I will not go back to my wayward ways. I will not walk out of this house. I will not be an individual that looked into a mirror and then I forget what I look like. Soon as I go out the door, I'm not going to be that. I'm tired of being watched. This is a hard word, but it's true. And it, and it touches. I don't want to be a liar anymore. Amen. She just talked about her husband. Her husband needs to know that there are men in this house. Yes, Look, when you come from a certain level of the world, you can smell it. Authentic. What's Authentic. That's what kids, that's why the kids, that's why the children and the youth today, they don't want to deal with some of the adults because they can smell that we're not authentic. Yeah, that's right. yeah. they, can, they can look at us. Say, oh, dude, please back up. I got $50,000 over there in a little safe and you're trying to tell me and you're obese. You're trying to tell me how to get my life right. You're trying to tell me what I need. And you're that. Those are just practical teachings because I deal with them. I deal with them every day. I deal with them in my apartment complex. All the time. Guess what I do? I go right out there and sit on the stoop with them like this. You know what they say? Hey, dude, we want to be like you. I said, that, those little, that little van and that little truck, that's whatever. But I said, but the deal is, is that being like me is turning from selling drugs. Being like me is wanting to give your heart to God. If you can give 100% to a demonstration, a game, if you can do that, guess what you'll be in the kingdom? You'll be a major warrior. Do you think there's anything that we need to repent of? Seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to family. Do you think that? Do you think that? Do you think we're desensitized towards, towards the hurting and the lamed and the maimed and the blind? Last testimony and, I'm, and we're done. I was in a service and I've said this before. I was in a service. I was all pumped up. God, whatever you want to do with me, I'm yielded. Whatever you want to say through me, hallelujah, Jesus, blah. I was, I was gone. And I'll never forget, I was out at the gas station on Toronto Road. 
And I was sitting there. And a car pulled up next to me. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, she's on her way to take her life. She's getting ready to go commit suicide. And it seemed like time stopped. And I felt like this fear whoosh, come on me. And I seen, her get out the, I seen her get out the door. And all I remember is something came into my heart that I thought, how can I, how can I stand and watch? know what I just heard and not move do you know that when you step out that's an act of faith as soon as I touched the, the handle of the door I felt the presence of God Woo. come on me did you get that it wasn't me because I, because I want to do what I said and when I met her, I met her at the door. And I said, hey, ma'am, I know this is going to sound a little weird, maybe. I said, but I heard the Spirit of the Lord told me, tell me that you were getting ready to go take your life. Her eyes got that big. I said, but there's so much more. And I was standing there holding the door. But watch this. When I stepped out in faith, Sister Carol, the glory of God was all over that area and she began to weep and I said there's so much more to live for I said Jesus set me free of wrong mindsets and I prayed with her to receive Christ while people were going through the door I prayed right there at the thing with her all it takes is us opening our lives up and being transparent with ourselves first. Really being honest with ourselves. Why don't we do the things? I'm not saying that no one doesn't. I'm saying, but, but sometimes we do things and we make ourselves feel okay for the moment. Like we're patting ourselves on the back. You know, if we do it once, hey, you know, I shared that, well, you know, and we want people to, you know, I don't know what. But there's so much more, Pastor Pam. You said that you all were in your neighborhood and that you begin to do like ministry in the neighborhood. When I was riding by last night, I saw this little woman on the other side of her. She had little black boots on and I thought, I wonder is that, is, you know, is that one of the people? That's what I thought. I wonder is that one of the people that they've been ministering to? That's what I thought. I just want to pray something. See, in this season, we'll get to know one another in a different flow. You see what I mean? Do you, do, you, do you really understand that by the Spirit? We'll get to know one another in a different flow. But if, you just, if I look at you as just such and such and you just look at me as a, that's Mark or whatever, then we can miss it. You see what I mean? We constantly are locking ourselves in and locking one another in. And you know what that is? It's almost like, it's almost like a, using this thing as a safeguard, not to, be, not to have to come closer or to, or to move you know what I'm saying? With, with more freedom in, 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 in relationship. You know? Not only with one another, but by the Spirit. You know? That's what people do. They call it safeguarding, like safeguarding themselves. But that's, not, that's not what God calls for us to do. He calls for us to move together as a team. God wants Springfield. Let's stand. God wants Springfield. I know he wants Springfield. I know he wants Springfield, Dr. Bob. Do you believe that? He wants this city. Let's go after this. Let's go after. It's just like when you pray for someone. If you've never prayed for no one to be healed, but if you never step out to do it, how, do you, how are you going to know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It, it really isn't. That's the whole thing about a command. If Dr. Bob said, hey, Mark, Brother Mark, I want you to go to St. John's Hospital and I want you to pray for such and such. I'm not going under my own power, my own. I'm going under the authority of the one who sent me. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wish I would say something like, do you love me? Well, what has that got to do with anything? I'm just talking about what God wants today. Do you believe that? 
He's sobering us up. He, we've been too gluttonous. That's why they call them pigs and hogs. Because they just want more and more and more. And they snort. <laughs> That's their language of love. <laughs> Give me another truffle, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Rutabagers are my best. Anyway, let me stop. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Let's just pray in the spirit just a little bit. Gabra soto coste de te. Sheita to bra suti de adatar. Zeno mano suto cobrato. Su braço to coste. Coste braço. Kist un braço to lo lamandro. Coste brisa. Tisti este bra. Zolo lo lo brosso. To lo coro se te de. Zeman sutu to keita brusa te ke ste savra el ararama uste koto brati si jeita ruru sutu do ro koste de ba zeita la ramandrio sobra sutu zeita la ramandrio sovra sita isti mano kute savra isto mano ko sunto ne nie sara se la ba rusu te dio somado kuro e dan brasu tu kurie sata ne dia sata ta ya yaro manaro sudoko ye se da raba ba so haleluya Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, keep pressing. Father, we thank you that, Lord God, that you bring us to a place like you did today. We want to thank you. We want to literally say thank you that you brought us to a place today of brokenness, of soberness, of, of realization, Lord God, of what you have commanded us to do. And all the attacks that have been bound up today, and all the attacks that have been broken down, God, you allow our spirit man, hallelujah, to come and walk free. And so we thank you for this refreshing. Teach us today how to protect what you have done. Teach us, I said, how to protect what you have done. Hallelujah. Thank you that, Lord God, our ear gates are no longer perverted. Our hearts are no longer fragmented. That, Lord God, you came in with your healing balm today and you touched us today in such a beautiful way. Help us, Lord God, even as maybe in times we've not uh, prayed or shared the gospel. I pray today that, Lord God, that the fresh fire I release right now in Jesus' name, fresh fire upon the minds and the hearts of your children, fresh fire, just receive it by faith, fresh fire today, receive it by faith, see the names and the faces of the lost and the hurting and the broken and the lame and the blind, see them today, hear them crying out, where are they, where are the ones that have been chosen and set aside by God, where are they, so we thank you today God. We bless your name today, Lord. We believe today, God, that we will see this house full. Hallelujah. We will see those that, Lord God, will come forth in this very spot with the microphone, and they will testify. I came into this house several months ago. I was messed up. I was broken. I had no clue, no direction. But today, I'm standing in the fullness and the glory and the power filled with the Holy Spirit. Today, I can testify of the goodness and the power of Christ. I can say that this is a house that loves men and loves women. It loves children. It loves the broken. It loves the rich. It loves the poor. I can say today that this is a house where I can abide and I can come and I can grow. I can tell others of the love of Christ and what he's done for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, So we thank you, Father God, for all what you do. Thank you, Lord God, for helping us, Lord God, to move forward together as a team and as a family. In the body of Christ, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Bob. And Okay, hallelujah. Well, you are dismissed. No. <laughs> Not dismissed that way, I mean, in a good way, to, to leave and to go. go.